Hi everyone and welcome to today's video release. So I'm Helder. I'm Thomas. So today we are here to talk about the release uh, 21.06. We have amazing things to show you today. We're going to start by introducing you a little bit about what we do. So we are a uh, application, uh, rapid application development platform company that currently has more than 600 customers in over uh, 41 countries, 3 million uh, end users, and we are a leading low-code uh, enterprise application development platform. We help businesses to digitalize and optimize uh, processes and to provide uh, a fast and cost-effective way to industrialize uh, custom application development, as well as integration and operations across the board. So today uh, we have two different modules of our product, the Neptune DX platform. We have the SAP edition and the open edition. The open edition is what we're going to focus here today. I'm going to mm -hmm. focus on the release 2106. And Thomas, this is an innovation release. Yes, that's true. Uh, released yesterday, actually, and uh, we'll be um, working on it for a couple of months to come. So um, you'll get a first sneak peek and it's available for download right now. So, so please uh, do try it out and give us your feedback because this is the time to... Absolutely. And, and a lot of these features are kind of the baseline of a new developer experience. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're going to show you that right now. We're going to show you live how it works, but we're going to have a... a, a, a an LTS version uh, yeah. of this in September, right? Yeah. So in September, we're gonna have, uh, tell us about the 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 release strategy. Yeah, so um, the release strategy is that we've seen that a lot of customers, they really don't want a new release every month mm -hmm. because it has to go through testing and through um, management and everything. And so we've tried to align this with the open edition and the SAP mm -hmm. edition yeah. so that we can do once a year and then release innovation releases between those and really sort of try out different things and get have customers try them out as well and give us feedback and we can be more nimble there sort of for because uh, of the LTS release which we will of course support uh, two years uh, going forward uh, that's more bug fixes and stuff innovation so. exactly so uh, this is innovation release and as Thomas was saying we are going to have a one LTS uh, release per year mm. so everything else that will come will come as patches that are cumulative and then you can just take advantage of that but it's innovation uh versions mm. um and this is the first release of our first innovation release so there's still things that are subject to change and it's not done that's the whole point of the innovation release absolutely and uh, and speaking of which everything starts at logon on this release so the changes mm -hmm. start immediately there mm -hmm. you're going to see it the moment you upgrade or the moment you install the the neptune dxp open edition and you open it up you're going to see something like this you have a whole new look for the login that is fully branded and give you uh abilities to uh have your own policies in there for and this is the logon for for the uh for the developers as well so you can have completely customized logons as well for the end users and you can see this is powered by neptune software obviously and uh, allows you to select which uh, login provider do you want to have yeah. uh and what is configured on your environment so that's that's uh, uh it looks so good though right it looks awesome yeah. actually it looks awesome but it's why it's, would you want to change it <laughs> yeah but because the way we are wanting to do with this is to help you increase uh, developer productivity and uh the three ways we want to do this is because we want to help the developers to focus focus on the right tools for the right job at the right time so we have a fully uh, role-based uh, cockpit that will give uh different uh, uh tools available depending on who you are to that company are you devops are you a designer are you a developer and then based on that it will as log on as the as the person progresses has the um it departments scale up their operations and the resources change you are going to have different roles and therefore have access to different tooling mm -hmm. so we want to make it also easier to onboard so every single piece of documentation in learning is available we have new learnings coming we have certification coming everything uh happening uh during this quarter and you're going to see it that it's going to be much easier for you to learn 
and to expand your knowledge around the Neptune DX platform. And also, we want to make it easier for you to access everything. So we have an amazing search bar that gives you um, on the on the on the tip of your fingerprint uh, fingertips mm. actually the ability for you to search, find, and open directly the artifacts that you want. I'm looking for this launchpad. That's launchpad. Navigate with a keyboard. Yeah, and enter. It's so done. much easier. Yeah. So so much easier. But what you, if you're already a customer and if you already know Neptune, this is what you know of our cockpit. Mm -hmm. This feels like uh, for us that's been now familiar with with the new the new mm -hmm. developer look uh, and feel and the new experience. This feels like it was. We've been traveling back in time now. Back, traveling <laughs> back in time now. So for you, this is what you know. And this is what you get to know. So you get to know a fully responsive uh, um, cockpit that it's still completely role-based. And what you can see now is that we have aligned the developer experience with the end user experience. So the launchpad concept is kind of uh, embedded in here with tiles. Um, and until we get to LTS, there will be obviously changes and more yeah. features added to, to, to this. Uh, so you're going to see on the next patch uh, evolution uh, quite a few changes here as well. But this is the baseline. This is the starting line. This is where we are setting up a tone saying this is Neptune and we are making it so easy for developers to learn and how to, they can navigate around the tools. Mm. So how does this actually look in real life is that I can just go to the browser and I have here my, uh, my uh, cockpit. And my cockpit, as you can see, gives me a very similar user experience compared to what you get on a launchpad. So I have my tiles, I have my favorites, I can add different uh, tools to my favorites, but where are the favorites actually? So everything is centralized around one thing, that top search bar that I can just activate by using a keyboard shortcut. Hmm. The keyboard shortcut is the key here. You can use then uh, the the tab to navigate and to open and the arrows, the cursor arrows to go from tool to tool to navigate through your tool set in a very straightforward and easy way, but also to search. So if I just go in here to the search and I would just say app or API, look, it's a dynamic search. I have immediately highlighted the top hit on my services, um, the API designer, because that's the first one. But if you say, okay, it's not the API designer I want, it's something within the app designer, and it's one of these artifacts. And when I click open, it will open the app designer and it will open the right app. Mm. That's something that will make it much easier for anyone to just start and use everything and reach everything uh, very quickly. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I believe what you're seeing right now will be uh, will be very good for new newcomers and new users because it helps you to explore the different options. But this the search bar there it's basically where you will live. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And the overall changes in uh, developer experience are pretty uh, everywhere. Uh, so if I go, for example, here open my tiles you're gonna see that the, the actual tool looks completely different. So you have now the action tiles here on the top right-hand side, and you are able to uh, 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 have them there and have a search and you have a package, so you, you have quick filters uh, up here and the the tooling also with sorting, et cetera. So everything is, is yeah, valid, the, right? Yeah, and the package there, if you select something, it will follow you to the other things that has package. So that filter will go across all the different areas. Absolutely. And now also you have the ability to visualize when you are on edit mode through that ribbon there on the left or when you are on display mode. Plus, you can now go here at any given point, jump from a tool to tool. So if I go here, tile group, and I'm looking for my tile group, enter, I open my tile group, but then I can navigate, uh, I can navigate through the tools that I'm on, either being on display or on change mode. Make it easier for me to just easily go from one to the other one. Hmm. So, but this is not all that we have uh, been working on. It's that 
the uh, uh, the services go on the left, as I said, the universal search bar on the top, and the universal search bar you have on the right hand side your favorites, on the left hand side all the services, direct access to the artifacts, and a live universal search. So this is uh, extremely useful if you if you are a developer. But what else is new? So there is a big thing that uh, we would like to show you is that we are opening up versioning, automated testing, and deployment, not only done with our tools, but also using Git, so that you can pipeline your CI CD, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so Git is something that most of you will be familiar with. Uh, it's something that more and more our customers yeah. start to use as well. And uh, yeah, so this is something that we are focusing on right now. We're not at the end of the journey, but we are really focusing on it right now to make Git as integrated into everything as we possibly can. Um, when we have Git support for all of these things, it also means that we don't have to do everything in the open edition. Many of you used your own, own external uh, specialized tools such as Jenkins or GitHub Actions or GitLab or what have you. And yeah, it's important for us to be able to support that kind of pipeline. Absolutely, and, and you can still opt for using the Neptune deployment and the automated testing tools, Test Cafe, etc., uh, and on and versioning, obviously. But you can go the Gateway. Yeah. And if exactly. you go the Gateway, basically, if you already have a CI/CD pipeline that you mm. want to reuse and plug in directly uh, to the platform, that's completely now open for that. Mm. So that's something that we have heard from many of our customers that they would like to have this route because they already have their development uh, pipelining with CI CD uh, completely set up uh, and they want to basically uh, use it. But better than showing you on the PowerPoint, I'm going to pass over to uh, Thomas here for him to, to uh, show us directly on the system. Okay, so now Thomas is gonna show us exactly what are we talking about, right? CI yeah. CD. Exactly. All right. Um, yeah. Um, thanks, Elder. I, I totally agree. Everything here looks so amazing. And now let's take the step out into um, Git, CI, CD, and all of that. So bear in mind, these are the first stages of this, but we will get there. So I, uh, I made a server script uh, as a demo. Uh, this, is, this could be anything. We have a compute function here. Could be three, could be four, could be one. Uh, it could be anything. Now, the beauty about Planet 9 is how easy it is to, this is JavaScript, remember. So in, uh, in Planet 9, you can just create in the API designer, a new API, call it a service script, go to the operations. And here I've selected the service scripts that mm -hmm. I just made. So if I run this now, you will see that this is the result of this service script. Now, so, so basically on the Neptune DXP Open Edition, there is the ability of obviously that we can create our own um, uh, microservices that can be JavaScript or TypeScript based, yes. uh, right? And what we've done here is build a, a small example that we are exposing as a crude method mm -hmm. uh, over as and proxying it as an a RESTful API, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I actually opened uh, the wrong project there, but it's this one. Oops, it's this one. So if we see here, you have mm. all all of these things, and then some. Sometimes you want to you want to just test one of these things from the API uh, endpoints, mm -hmm. and when you want to actually deploy things, usually it's a collection of things. It's not just one API endpoint. In this case, it will be the server script behind this API endpoint as well. It could be other things. So for that, we have something called a development package. Here you can have all the artifacts that you have added to this uh, to this development package. Yeah, and it's important now to to highlight that now the development package can have and connect to all kinds of artifacts. So we're we're uh, on previous uh, versions of the Neptune DXP Open Edition, there was uh, some restrictions on which uh, artifacts had development package. Now everything has development package exactly, exactly because we want to be able to just use this as a deployment option. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. So here you have something we call the CI-CD pipeline, which you can enable. 
now when we have this, we get a new tab here, which is called CI/CD. Um, you can put a path to your local Git repository. This will also um, support GitHub and stuff uh, mm -hmm. going forward. Uh, at the moment, it's local. Now, since we did add APIs, we can, for instance, go to the server script API. We can add one. I did already. It's a very simple one. Uh, all of these things are default, but it comes up here with what I expect something to be. So remember when I showed you that service script with the API endpoints, mm -hmm. now if I run this, so what happened now was that we have put this deployment or development package mm -hmm. into here. We are doing regular node or npm uh, commands to do this uh, i can even show you yeah but exactly that's what i was going to we don't you don't necessarily need to run be able to run mm -hmm. this test through no. our ui you can run this test on jenkins or on exactly. anything so that's that's extremely important because we want to be a de facto open platform as the name implies yeah, yeah. this and the ability here is that you can run anything through our core APIs. And this is another example where you can actually do it. Yeah. Um, so one of the th uh, things about having it internally might be, for instance, that you want these to run continuously in the background yeah. so that you know this before you deploy, maybe. But you don't have to do this. You're, you're completely right. So remember, I, told, I, um, I said that in the CI-CD pipeline here, mm -hmm. I put it here. So let me just open that. And if we see here, this is this is something that's just put there by itself. I didn't do anything here now. So you can look at have a look at the generated package JSON file. It has by default two scripts. One is test and one is deploy. So the test one right now uses suggest, but as you can see, if you know uh, nodes, you can easily use some other testing tool if you want to. Yeah, for example, Jenkins, right? Well, no, not Jenkins, because that's a CI CD okay. pipeline tool. Uh, but you could use Ava, for instance. Okay. So now that we're here, since this is just a regular uh, node project, we can just do, for instance, npm run tests. And then this is, of course, the same thing as you saw in Planet 9 itself. But then this enables you to just ship this wherever you want to and uh, and use that pipeline instead now we have for the uh, for the scripts that we have generated right now we have a deploy script which will deploy the packages we have selected for for this project to another system you can also do mm -hmm. it you can also do it um by setting up whoops by <laughs> by setting up deploy urls here of course, and, and that basically after the tests are concluded, et cetera, you can just deploy to your next uh, yeah. um, open edition uh, uh, environment. Mm. Uh, and basically this this makes it, uh, you can even put a readme, uh, so you get documentation together yeah. with that. So it makes it much easier for, for plugging into already existing CI CD pipelines. And that's mm. kind of where we are going to. As I said, this is innovation. So this is yep. the baseline. Yep. We're going to grow from here to the LTS and make it more uh, functionalities available. Another uh, important thing that we wanted to show here today of this release is the VS Code plugin. Yes. Right? And let me just show it what we mean by that. So another important thing that we wanted to show here is the our new plugin to Visual Code extension, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and what this is is that you have the ability to, on Visual Code, to just uh, code the way you want uh, using the tool that you're comfortable with, but taking advantage of what you are doing with Neptune, which is basically API proxying, there is deployment, all of those other things, yeah. authentication, all of those things. So maybe better than than me telling you the context ab around it. Let's let's see how, how actually it is in reality. So yeah, you should have it now. Yep. Yeah, so uh, right now we do have the app editor, which is uh, basically our pro code offering in the web. 
on yeah. our platform. Exactly. So this works, but it does work by compiling things on the server side. So we right. here we can build React and Vue applications. Yeah. It's important to say, right? Exactly. Um, but some people, well, a lot of people, have started using uh, VS Code, uh, the local uh, editor, uh, which is especially popular again uh, amongst JavaScript and TypeScript developers and React and Vue and all of those. Which is the target for this kind of tooling specifically on the pro code side. So yeah. So what I've done now is simply one thing. I've installed the, uh, the extension. Mm -hmm. It's on the marketplace. Uh, so uh, you can just yeah go to the marketplace there. On VS Code and, and yeah. yeah, uninstall. And then we want to run this on a server. So let's say I want to run it on our internal test server. So then first I need a URL. Mm -hmm. This is the system you want to put yeah. your stuff on. And then you get up all the different uh, login options that we have on our system. So let me just use uh, my local user, that's fine. Now, login successful, great. Um, so let's see what we got. We have a project created here now, or actually let me create a new project first, maybe. That's better, hello world that's a very common a project <laughs> that's, a, that's a very common one so i'll just yeah create a demo folder here let's put it there and now these are sort of the skeleton files that's generated and as you can see all of this is just regular uh, react stuff so now if i want to open the development server. So we're using Webpack for this. And remember, I, I haven't written anything uh, now. I've just clicked so far, right? Yeah. So what can that bring? So now you're opening the, the server, right? Yeah, now I'm starting a development server, which will um, just monitor your files and keep rebuilding when you change things. So you don't have to do that yourself. Of course, you can change anything you see here actually and, and still be able to put this on uh, on plan nine the only the only real uh, sort of the only thing we need to do is to be able to upload it but as long as you can compile it yourself on mm -hmm. your computer then that's fine because what you upload is sort of the generated code so for instance if you need a plugin that's difficult to compile on a server for instance uh, then you can just simply use this tool and then do it for yourself. So now if we if we now go to back to, so you want to now deploy, right? Yes, so uh, what I did was I had to enter some credentials, but uh, I started the development server. What happened immediately was that my default um, browser was opened. So if I open this and put it next to this, just to kind of show you how this works. And go to the app and search for, let's say, uh, so we have pet list here and we have pet details. When I hit, let's say, let's change this to hello world. Yeah, all right, let's. Why not? Let's be crazy. Be, advantage, be and, adventurous. Yeah, let's be adventurous. I, I just saved there. I, I didn't touch the keyboard. Look, well, no hands, right? So it does live reloading and all of those things. Um, and this is actually, this is doing live data from uh, our server because this is, uh, this is just a test. Uh, Touching an API. Yes. And, Very good. And what we can do here is we will, um, we, we will get autocomplete for all of these different APIs that we have. Because Neptune DXP Open Edition has a language server. Exactly. Correct? Yes. So uh, all of these things are uh, exported, uh, works pretty well. Uh, once you're done with all this, and just to show you that this is actually, this is just a regular uh, Webpack file. So you're free to add whatever you want there. So once you're done, also, by the way, if you want to add APIs, these are the APIs we have on this test server. They're being proxied on, on this environment. So yeah, exactly. it's easy for you to just say which API we want, and from the API definition, it will fetch automatically uh, the uh, uh, 
um, the way you call that API? Yeah. So um, both that and you'll get uh, actually uh, the doc strings for it as well if you um, put there. So if you in, if you import a Swagger file, for mm -hmm. instance, they often have good documentation. So okay. you'll get that as well in your editor. So that's kind of cool. And then now let's say you're done, then you can do upload. So now it's uploading to Planet 9 and it says here, this is the URL. When I try so it's open. uploading to, to the DXP open edition. So it's opening directly yeah. there. Oh, sorry, exactly, that's it. So let me just log in here. So look, I, I created this entire project. I never actually went to the website itself even. Mm -hmm. The open edition was totally not here. I, the only thing I used was VS Code and I logged into the URL. So then what you can use then, you can use this then embedded into a launch battle mobile client. You can use the deployment either with Neptune deployment or using Git deployment. Uh, you can then uh, gate this with roles and authorizations. You can uh, embed this into a... Um, a launchpad that that will cater for the authentication, all the different parts oh, yeah, of it, yeah. or a mobile client. So focus on the code of the app. Let the deployment, let the CI/CD, let let the the actual uh, heavy lifting of authentication and securing of your application be handled by Neptune. And yeah. that's basically what we exactly. uh, wanted to show you here today is that uh, with this baseline of 21.06 you're going to get a much better uh, developer experience and you are able to uh, do a lot more in a better way, easier, faster. And this is, as I said, innovation and baseline. So yeah, and the sky's I, the limit here. The sky is really the limit. I, I love the VS Code plugin and, and so many doors it opens. And obviously you can just get however you want to there. And and when you put it on Planet 9, it's going to be synced across all the different Planet 9 installation. And uh, there's so many possibilities there. And also the uh, the uh, deploy development package that I showed you, uh, I would love to hear lots of feedback on that. Because Absolutely. It's still a work in progress. So you can just download this 2106 version of the Neptune DXP Open Edition and just run it directly on your laptop if you want. And you can uh, give us feedback directly on the community. Uh, and we'll be happy to hear it from you. Meanwhile, have a look at the uh, many more other new features that you have available on the release notes. And if you have any questions, just send us an email or reach out to us on the Neptune community. Meanwhile, me and Thomas would like to thank you all for being part of this video today. And we're looking forward to the upcoming uh, releases and innovations and things that we are going to do for you. Absolutely. So, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.